We're in Luke 15. If you have got your Bibles, we're in Luke chapter 15. Luke is in the Old or New Testament. Somebody tell me, Old or New Testament? New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. Anybody else? Old New Testament? Old New Testament? Put your hand up if you think it's in the Old Testament. Put your hands down. Put your hand up if you think it's in the New Testament. Put your hands down. The New Testament seems to have got it. And you're right, the New Testament is in the New Testament. Somebody tell me the first book in the New Testament. Matthew, good. Somebody tell me the second book in the New Testament. Mark? Who said it? Mark. Who said Mark? You said Mark? Did you say Mark? You both said Mark? Mark, yes. Third book of the New Testament? John. John? John? No. It's not John. It's Luke. It's Luke. Luke. And then, what's the next John. book? John. Good. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Those four. Romans will come later. Yes. There is a book called Romans. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Those are the four books where we find the story of Jesus. Those four books are called. Who wants to tell me what the four books are called? Any guesses? Any guesses? What are those four books called? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No guesses. Oh, we haven't done this in a long time. Hangman. Hangman. Let's go. I think I'm going to start in the back corner. So I'm going to start with Nia. No? All you have to do is guess a letter. You know the letters of the alphabet? Do you, do you know the letters of the alphabet? You do? Okay. I, I, I thought you were going to shake your head. No. I said, no, come on. Can you guess one? No? What do you say? A. A? Mmm. Over here to the well. B? No. And we'll move over to T. D? No. Oh. <laughs> Tails kicked. Wait. Noah! Turn. Z. No. 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 Let the other one. No. All right. Uh, Matthias. E. E. Eric. Um, R. R. What about his hand? 
three parables. And you're all looking at me and saying, Brother Dave, what on earth is a parable? If I have one bull, which is a boy cow, and I have another bull, which is a boy cow, I have a pair of bulls, right? Yeah. Get it? <laughs> Don't laugh, you only encourage me. No, a parable. A parable is a story. You see, when Jesus taught the people, most of the people didn't have a whole lot of education. They didn't know a whole lot about the Bible. And so he used stories to get the point across. And one of the parables he told was, one of the stories that he told was the story of the lost sheep. I'm going to read that to you here. He spoke of this parable to them saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doesn't leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there are will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Okay, so imagine if you would. You have a hundred sheep, right? You're a shepherd. You have a hundred sheep. Yeah. One of them gets lost. Yeah. Now, if I'm, if I'm a bean counter, if I'm an accountant, I'm going to go, well, let's see. 100 sheep, we lost one. That's a 1% loss, we can accept that. We can just write that off, don't worry about it. You still got 99 left, right? No need to worry about the one, you got 99 left. Don't worry about the one. No, okay, so so if you're an accountant, that's smart. You say, okay, I don't, I don't have to worry about the one, I, I got the 99. But you do. I still got I still got 99. I don't have to worry about the one. But Jesus doesn't work that way. Oh, yeah. That's what he's saying. God doesn't work that way. Yeah. He's more concerned about the one. Even though he's got 99 others, he's concerned about one. <sighs> Tavion, you got a big family. You get to feel lost sometimes, don't you? You're, you're one of the middle kids. You got older brothers and sisters, and you got younger brothers and sisters. Yeah. And sometimes it's real easy to kind of feel lost, right? For one reason, you see your brothers and sisters are right next to you. Right, the younger brothers and sisters are right here. There's three of you guys. Kaylee, you're the middle one. The older one gets all the attention. The younger one gets all the attention. The yep. Eric, you got a bunch of brothers and sisters. What about me? Right now, your brother's getting a whole lot of attention because of his neck. I, I still have the attention. You're just screaming out for attention. I, I, I have it. I have attention. Right? What do you think, Matthias? You got older brothers. Sometimes it feels like uh, you're kind of an afterthought, right? Sometimes. You know your parents love you. You know that. Look, I, I, I know what it's like. I got, I got an older sister, and I got a younger brother, and I used to have two younger sisters. Now I only have one. What happened to that? She died. She died. How? She had a heart attack. Thank you. It was on her birthday. So, but here's the thing though I grew up one of five kids I just came back you saw the pictures of the beach I was up at a family reunion my mom was one of 12 kids so yeah 12 kids 24 kids I have on just that side of the family I have 31 cousins 
I have 31 cousins just on that side of the family. I got more on my dad's side of the family. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to feel lost. Here's the thing, though. God sees you. God sees you. If you're one of 24, God sees you. That's it. She's the youngest of 24 kids. Tavion, God sees you. Jaden, God sees you. Nia, you are most important to God. You are just as important as Jaden. You are just as important as your mom. You are just as important as anybody else. Here's the thing. Jesus is saying that God is like that shepherd who had a hundred sheep. Now, a lot of people, big picture people, big picture thinking, say, well, you know, I had a hundred. I still got 99. 99 is pretty good. Okay? Let me let me let me ask you something. What about what? Put your hand up if you get if you take a test in school and you get 99 on the test. Do you feel pretty good? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, mm -hmm. But you, you didn't get 100. No, That's okay. I got 99. No, because I'm wondering what right? to the 1%. Right? You feel pretty good, don't you, Noah? Not that good. I only get 99. Okay. 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 Look, look. I, I didn't get 100. But I got 99. That's pretty good. It is. Yeah. Why, why did you get 100? That, that's prayer. So. That's, here's the thing, though. God is like that shepherd who has a hundred sheep. One of them gets lost. That one sheep was important to the shepherd. No matter how many of you there are, no matter how many people are around you, no matter how many people seem to be taking the spotlight from you, it's so special. you matter to God. You matter to God. God, you mean so much to God that He's willing to leave the others and go find you. Now, I don't want to see any of you get lost. I don't want to see any of you walk away from God. That would be a terrible thing. But know this. God is concerned about you. God loves you. He says, I say to you, uh, let's see, well, what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, doesn't light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she's found it, she calls all her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Anybody who comes back to God, there's great joy in heaven. There's great joy in heaven. They have a party in heaven when we, get when we get back to God. Now, it's better if you don't leave God in the first place, okay? That's better if you don't leave God in the first place. But if you do, know this. You come back. You always can come back. Always can come back. How many have ever made a mistake in their lives? All right? You want to be honest? You know? Okay? Okay? If you ask my brother or my sisters, they'll say, yeah, that David, he thinks he's Mr. Perfect. He thinks he never makes a mistake. Well, I'll tell you what, I make some big mistakes. Yeah. Every day, I make yeah. some big I get mad at people that I shouldn't get mad at. Why? Because I'm stupid, that's why. Yeah, you are. No, you don't. That's why. Because I do things that I shouldn't do. And, you know, Paul said we all do that. We do the things that we don't want to do. And we don't do the things that we know we ought to do. But, listen, you can always come back to God. He's waiting for you. And when you do come back, 
He's going to throw a party. Last parable that Jesus told. A certain man had two sons. Now, here's, here's the deal. Okay, girls, this stinks, all right? Back in that time, only boys got the inheritance. Oh, no fair. Okay. What about the girls? Got any brothers? Yeah. He gets it all. Yeah. I got brothers. They get it all. <laughs> He gets, yeah, he, gets I I he gets everything. He gets everything. He's the only boy. No, they always get all the clothes. Yes. You get, you get to fight. Uh, you get to fight Damien for. Sorry, Noel. Boys get it all. Sorry, Nia. Jaden's the, Jaden's the man. Wow. What about women? Yeah, you got no sisters. You don't have to worry. Yay! Sorry. Brothers get it all. That's how it worked back then. You know what? Thank God that doesn't work that way now. Thank God it doesn't work that way now. But back then, it was just the boys. And so the man had two sons. He had two sons. And the plan was when he died, he was going to split. Whatever he had was going to be split among the two sons. Now, I'm sure there must have been a predetermined amount or something like that. Because the younger son comes to him and says, You know, Dad, I don't want to wait until you die. I don't want to wait. Give me my inheritance now. Wow. Such a good little boy. He wasn't a little boy. He was a big boy. No, he's a little boy. Well, a little boy is mine. Like yeah, does he? Doesn't he? He's whiny. There are a lot of people that are grown up. Uh, grown. They grow up. And leave your hands to yourself, Raina. I, 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 I saw the hand about to fly. I saw the hand about to fly. No, I am All right, listen up. Listen up. Listen up. So the young one says, Dad, I don't want to wait till you die. I want my inheritance now. All right. Dad said. Here's the thing. The, the boy... Boy, he's a young man. He gets all of his No, his dad was a rich man. So he gets all of his riches. You know what's the first thing that's on his mind? Party, 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 party. And he goes out and he starts living wild. He starts spending money. He's spending money on everybody. He's doing everything. He's not doing the things that his dad taught him, though. You see, his dad taught him to be a responsible young man. He's out partying with his friends. He's out spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money. Guess what happens when you do that? You got no money. Pretty soon, you got no money. And you go broke. Now, further complicate things. Now you figure, okay, I ain't got no money. I'm broke. So let's just go get a job, right? Piece of cake, right? Bad times. Famine in the land, no food. No work. He can't find a job. He's hungry. He yeah, ain't got nothing to eat. There's nobody gonna give him food to eat because they barely have enough food for themselves. So they're like, ah, ah. Now he's going along and he's trying to find work. Now he's starving. That money ain't there anymore. Now he's starving. He sees a farmer. He says, can it be your hired hand? The farmer said, well, I ain't got much, but here, I want you to feed the pigs. Oh no, I know this story. Now, listen to this. Now Jesus was Jewish. Jewish people don't feed pigs. Jewish people don't touch pigs. They don't eat pork. They don't eat, they don't eat ham. They have nothing to do with pigs because pigs are considered unclean. The only job he can find was feeding the pigs. So in other words, not only was he in a bad situation where he didn't have money enough to eat, now he's forced to do something that goes against his religious beliefs. I watched this. 
You know what he got to eat? Very little. He's feeding the pigs. And that food that he's feeding the pigs starts looking real good. Because it's more, those pigs are getting more to eat than he is. He's in a bad way. And finally, he comes to his senses. He says, wait a minute. Okay, I'm struggling here. I'm still starving. I got a job, but I'm still starving. I barely got enough to eat. The food that I am, I am feeding pigs. That goes against my religious beliefs, but I am feeding pigs. And the food that I am feeding the pigs looks a whole lot better than the food that I get to eat. My dad's got servants. My dad's servants don't starve. My dad's servants don't lack for anything. My dad's servants do pretty well. What am I doing here? I'm going to go back to my dad. And I'm going to ask him to make me a servant. I don't deserve to be his son anymore because I, I just I took half of what he had and I just blew it. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask him if I can be a servant. And so he does. And then his, dad sees his dad is out in the field. I know what he does. He sees him coming. You know what dad did when he saw his son? ran to his son. Now, let me, let me talk about this for a second. When you are rich, back, back in that day, and even, even today, when you are rich, you don't run unless you want to, right? You have, if, you, if there's something that needs to be done, you send somebody to go do it, right? Back in that day, a rich guy did not run. For any reason whatsoever he had people if there was something that needed to be done he would send a servant to run for it he didn't run it had to be something pretty 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 special to get a rich man to run his son was that special thing he saw his son coming you've you've seen you've seen people in the distance and you can tell when you know them, you can just tell by the way they walk. You may not see their faces, but you can tell by the way they walk. The way That's they dress. the way they dress. You can tell, even, even in this case, because his son, remember that his son left him, you know, pretty good, pretty healthy. Now he's starving. His clothes are probably rags. Yeah. But you can tell. When you see family from far off, you can tell. And he saw his son from afar off, and he ran. He ran. He ran. Rich men didn't run. He ran. Why? Because his son meant that much to him. And he grabbed his son. He began to hug his son. My son has returned home. Son goes, Dad, I don't deserve to be called your son. You just make me your servant. He was like, no. You know what his dad said? No, no. He didn't say anything. He, said, he, he didn't even acknowledge what his son said. It wasn't even a question. He wasn't gonna make his son a servant. It's his son. So here's the here's the son. He goes, Dad. I don't deserve to be called your son. Just make me one of your servants. And dad, dad just ignores him and says to one of his servants, he says, go, get some clothes for him. And he says to another, go, go, go find the best fatted calf and kill it. We're going to have a party. My son's home. My son has come back. Dad wasn't having any, he wasn't having any of it. My son has returned. Have a party. It's party time. Hi, I watched this. It's party time. Party. Now, here's the thing. The oldest son. The oldest son never left his dad. 
The oldest son. The oldest son is what we would call a GTS. Oh, wow. Does anybody know what a GTS is? Miss Faith knows what a GTS is because she's been called that all her life. A GTS is a goody two shoes. Oh, Who oh. knows what a goody two shoes is? A good brother. They never do anything bad, do they? So he is a You do something a little out of line, they say you shouldn't do that. The oldest son was a goody two shoes. He never did anything wrong. He stayed with the dad. He did everything right. He comes home and he hears a party going on. He's like, what's going on? He calls the servant. He's like, what's going on? Your brothers come home. And your dad has killed the fatted calf and is having a party for him. He got mad. I knew it. He's a gorilla. He's a gorilla man. My dad never had a party for me. Yeah, because I've served my dad all my life. I've always done what he told me to do. His son didn't even want to call him his brother. He said, his son has taken half of everything that we owned and wasted it, and now Dad's throwing a party for him. I ain't going into that party. Me either. His dad came out. Son, come on in. Your brother's home. I ain't going in. Your son wasted half of what we own. I've been good. I've done everything you told me to. I've worked for you all my life. I've done. I've been your model son. You never threw a party for me. You never let me have a fat calf to have a party with my friends. I've served the Lord all my life. I grew up in a preacher's home. My dad was a preacher. I knew what it was to be in church since the day I was born. You did? I got a certificate at home that says my first time in church was January 28, 1964. That's a long time. Wait, this church been here? No, not, no. no, not this church. This is back, back in Pennsylvania. Uh, it was a church that my grandfather was pastor of. Said that I was in that church January 28, 1964. I was a week old. I was a week old. No, I was one week old. I was baby, seven days old. Seven days. Seven days. I was only born a week before that. And I was already in church. I have never left the church my whole life. I started leading worship in church when I was 16. I started teaching Sunday school when I was in my early 20s. Ever since I was a kid, I've always done something in church. I'm kind of like that older son. And sometimes it's easy to think, you know, God's never done anything to me. He's never done anything for me. I've served Him all my life. God's never done anything for me. Here's what the Father said, though. Everything I have ever had is yours. Stay in church. Everything that the Father has ever had is yours. Don't, don't be like that son that ran away and wasted all the money. Now listen, if you do, when you decide to come back, he's going to receive you and there's going to be great joy. There's going to be a party. But don't do that. But don't do that. Don't do that. Because it's better. You see, the younger son saw some things that he should have never had to see. The younger son suffered things that he should have never had to suffer. It doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say how long. But you know this, it was long enough that he lost all his money, first of all. He spent all of his money. And he got to the point where he was starving. And you got to you got to go a long time without having food to be starving. And that younger son was that way. The younger son was a foolish son. But here's the thing. Whether you're wise like the older son 
or whether you're a fool like the younger son, there's always a place in the Father's house for you. The younger son didn't know. Let me say that again. Whether you're wise like the older son, or whether you're foolish like the younger son, there is always a place in the Father's house for you. All you have to do is come back. All you have to do is come back. All you have to do is humble yourself before God. There's a place in the Father's house for you. Everybody bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you because there is a place for you, uh, for us in your house. There's a place for us. I pray, Lord, that we would be like the older son and that we would serve you always, but that we would not resent those that come back. I pray, Lord, that we would not be like the younger son who leaves your presence and wastes everything that he has. But, Lord, if we do, that we would find our way back to you. Lord, I pray for each one here that they would, that they would live their lives with wisdom and that they would always live their lives close to you and close fellowship with you. And in everything that they do, that you would bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.